one of the things I've been struggling with when it comes to Wano Country so far is trying to find the core theme of Wano Country. Now, many arcs in One Piece have a core theme that is like the driving force behind many of the... Yeah? Yo, welcome to the family, off stream. Yeah, boy. Welcome to the family, son. Welcome to the realm, off stream. Good stuff, while I'm recording too. I'm keeping it in there, not a big deal. In fact, you know what, that's a huge plus. And you guys should follow suit. You guys and gals should definitely follow suit. But that being said, a lot of arcs in One Piece have core themes that are the driving force of a lot of the plot points in these arcs. So, for example, for Whole Cake Island, the core theme, I would say, is family. For Fishman Island, the core theme is discrimination. When it comes to Marine Ford War, I would say that, that the core theme is purpose. With Wano Country, I've had a hard time really kind of pinpointing what the core theme is of this arc. Now, at first, I thought that the core theme was loyalty because it was through loyalty, not in Wano, but in Zo, where we see Inuata Shinigamamushi and the Minx. They have such strong loyalty for the Kozuki clan that they protect Raizo even after Jack's invasion, even after many of them were at risk of dying and people lost limbs. Even when it came to the Straw Hats, not knowing the truth about Momo's identity, but also Kinemon and Kanjiro, mainly Kinemon, they didn't tell the Straw Hats the truth about Momonosuke, which the Straw Hats did find pretty surprising. Then it was the people of Wano Country their loyalty that continued to span for 20 years for the Kozuki clan, despite waiting that, you know, two decades. People like Suyu, people like the mafia bosses, like the prisoners in the Ratsetsu district, the folks that are essentially our allies in this war against Kaido. Next would be the Koma Fox that protected Onimaru, the fox that protected the bridge for the Eternal Graves and Ringo, for a period of time, seeing the loyalty that the Fox had defending that bridge against all invaders and how Kawamatsu and Onimaru worked things out. So there are many examples in Wano Country where loyalty is fierce, where even after 20 years, people remain loyal to a certain cause, to a certain clan, and it's done so very fervently, it's done so very, very righteously. And again, we get that in Zo. And Zo ties to Wano Country, of course, in many respects, duh. However, now more than ever, now more than ever, I'm of the mindset that instead of the core theme being loyalty, it's more so sacrifice. Now, I could be wrong on both fronts where sacrifice and loyalty are just major themes and they're not the actual core root theme of Wano Country. But right now, I'm gonna say sacrifice. Because when you look at a lot of the real-time actions, major actions, pivotal moments, and the root, like the driving factor of these things, they tend to be rooted more so in sacrifice rather than loyalty. So here are a few examples here. Number one, despite the fact that the scabbards are duty-bound to protect Momonosuke, and they are very loyal to that as a whole, before the flashback, Kinemon and the other Red Scabbards, before the betrayal of Kanjiro, they were willing, I would argue, to sacrifice themselves in the name of avenging Kozuki Oden. And they left Momonosuke with Shinobu. So their desire of revenge, knowing probably full well that they were going to die at the hands of Kaido and company, that outweighed let's say their loyalty and their duty to protect Momo. Another example would be Yasue's sacrifice via the execution, where because he gave his life, the name of the rebels was cleared for a period of time. Now, because Kanji was a traitor, they still got intel through nonetheless. However, in the latest chapter, 975, we see that Yasue's efforts were not in vain because of Denjiro's actions. So Yasue's sacrifice did pay off ultimately, and now they have their 5,400 men rolling on up to Onigashima. Another example would be in chapter 150, where you have the raid on Onigashima 10 years earlier 
by the random samurai guys that Ashra Doji tries to convince not to go and wait another 10 years. These guys, when they snatch you, when they have their little rowboats and they're rolling on up to Onigashima, they felt like they couldn't wait anymore because they would weaken over the course of time. And because they couldn't hold themselves back, it was now or never. And again, they're doing so, I would say, fully understanding that they're going to die with the forces that they had. And in fact, they did die. A whole bunch of these guys died. Now, more relevant to the main characters, look at, for example, Luffy in the prisoner mines. When you have the plague bullets and you have the infected prisoners, Luffy puts his own body on the line, showing them that this quote unquote power that Kaido and his forces have is not strong at all. And how they themselves have become slaves from a mental standpoint because they gave up hope in trying to defeat Kaido and company. So Luffy put his body on the line. He sacrificed his body to show them how wrong they were in their current mindset. And Luffy's sacrifice of his body, changing the mindset of those people, gained them allies, essentially. Yeah, Momo came in later too, but given their mindset, before Luffy changed their minds, throwing his body on the line, even though Momo was there, would they have been so gung-ho to bow down to Momo and then be ready to fight against Kaido? I would argue no. Luffy's actions were the necessary step to convince these people to get ready to fight against Kaido. So they gained allies. When it comes to Sanji in the rage suit, he had to throw away his pride and his issues with his family. So he had to sacrifice his disdain for his family, his disdain for their power. And he put on the rage suit after throwing away his pride. And from that, he gained a power up. Zoro had to give up on Shusui, a sword that a lot of folks thought that he would have to like the end of the story. He had to give up on Meto Shusui for the sake of the people of Wano and how important that sword is to them. Also knowing that it was stolen as well, he gave it up and then in return, he gained Enma, another power up. So it seems like in more ways than one, when it comes to at least the main cast of characters so far, they do sacrifice something and in return, they do gain something. Now you can also say that a lot of the loyalty moments that I mentioned previously are also somewhat rooted in sacrifice because Obviously, when it came to Raizo is safe, that was a big thing there. However, if not for Sanji and Chopper doing what they did to help the citizens of Zo, they would have died. And we know that Neko and Inu, they permanently lost limbs. So they were willing to sacrifice their lives for the sake of their loyalty to the Kazuki clan. And even though many people in Wano country today are very loyal to the Kozuki clan. All of this loyalty that we see is for the most part built by Kozuki Oden in that flashback. I don't doubt that his father, Sugiyaki, played some role in that because he was a shogun prior to Orochi. By the same time, when you have all of the rebels finally gathered together in chapter 975, one of the mafia bosses does state that we'll never forget about Oden's legendary death. So it is Oden's sacrifice that has continued to foster that loyalty for the Kozuki clan. And also, before we get to the loyalty element that is very strong in Wano country has been breached in a lot of respects. So for example, at the end of Act 2, in chapter 955, it is somewhat kind of-ish hinting at that law, with that one panel of law, law was very questionable come like the end of Act 2, and it's not until the recent chapters that we see Law on board. Some folks do still believe that Law is going to betray the Straw Hats and betray Kid. So that is still possible as well. Less so now, I'd argue. But again, remember, at the end of 955, at the end of Act 2, it is kind of somewhat implied that Law may not be fully on board when it comes to the Alliance, number one. And then number two is that Kanjiro was, in fact, the traitor. So that loyalty that he had wasn't to, you know, Kozuki Oden and the Kozuki family. It was for Orochi and the Kurozumi family. But he was the traitor and he did betray the Kozuki family and Oden and the Scabbards nonetheless. And you can actually kind of also say that's also rooted in some degree of sacrifice because he was so loyal 
that he was willing to give his life for the sake of that loyalty. He was willing to die the actor 20 years ago. He was fully committed to that. So Kanjiro, that loyalty element is also tied hand in hand with sacrifice as well, tremendously so. And finally, this all comes to a head for Zoro. Because the very first chapter where we get genuine Wano country content is chapter 909. And the title of that chapter is Seppuku. Ah, uh, cutting one's belly. And Seppuku, the one that's actually doing it, or are supposed to do it, is one Roronora Zoro. Now, of course, he doesn't do it at all. He, you know, takes out a samurai. It is what is there. And he kills the magistrate. However, Seppuku, in the sense, of course, of taking one's life for committing a serious offense that brought shame to themselves or their family, and so, in order to restore your honor, you have to, you know, again, the belly cut, and then you slice, and then boom. So, you kill yourself for your, to restore your own honor, and the honor of your family, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason why I think it's very pivotal, when you look at the first chapter of Wano Country, essentially, when Zoro is committing seppuku, that in itself, I think, is a very, very strong theme of sacrifice. And how this arc, Wano Country, has many ties to thriller bark and what did zoro do in thriller bark we all know we all know taking luffy's pain and that moment you can say is very comparable to odin's struggle and holding up the scabbards the sacrifice that zoro does for luffy and how after he took Luffy's pain, he was never the same again for the entirety of the remaining of the pre-time skip. Zoro was never the same again. And how Oden gave up his own body for not only the scabbards, but also you can say the whole of the citizens of Wano country, for his country, sacrificing one's body, one's life for things greater than themselves, outside of themselves. And I have to also note back to Hawkins' words in chapter 913. Because in this chapter, he states that the probability of being alive one month from now is 90%, but it's not too sure if it's either Zoro or Luffy. It could be one or the other. But in the anime, it kind of clarifies a little bit more in episode 898, where in the anime, according to the Crunchyroll translation, it is the probability of you too living another month is 19%. So it's not just Luffy, it also could be Zoro. So Zoro, based on all the things that I went through, the probability that the core theme is sacrifice, the ties of this arc to Thriller Bark, the ties of Zoro to Oden, and how sacrifice is also playing a role in the main characters in some ways in this arc as well. Again, based on all of these different things, I now think there's a good chance that we're going to see another major sacrificial moment on Zoro's part to do something for Luffy, for the crew, who knows? But it's gonna be a major moment for Zoro where he's gonna sacrifice something to make sure that they achieve their goals for this arc. And also I can say the same thing could apply to me Law as well, because I do see Law dying in this arc. So that is my take on that note. Let me know where you stand on the subject matter at hand. I think it's very possible, but I could be missing a few things here or there, obviously. If I miss anything, if anything that you want to add on, when it comes to, let's say, themes of Wano Country, let me know as well. On your take on that as well, be sure to rate the video. It is not that hard to do. I guarantee you that, because I know that you all have a device called Zaymao Shoe. You use Zaymao Shoe to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell to the squad. And of course, as always, feel free to please do comment in the comment section down below. Once again, peace and have a nice goddamn day.